Hi and welcome to my channel, I'm Simon and today I'm back unusually on a Saturday to talk about some of my favourite non-fiction books that I've read so far this year, plus a few books that I would like to get to non-fiction wise over the forthcoming weeks. I was going to say months but that ain't true. Speaking of months though, it is non-fiction November and I am tardy to the party on this. If you know that reference, we're best friends forever. Um, but also what I thought I would do is not talk about my very favourites, but talk about sort of number 11 to 20. Although I say that, the library's in absolute chaos. There's piles of books there that you can see. They go all the way back and there's piles behind the sofa on that side. There's some more here and here. There's some down there. There's some over there and some down... Well, down here that you can't see and actually a few down that you can't see but um, I don't have time at the moment because I'm not home enough and um, today's my like only day off at home until the 21st of uh, December and I'm doing loads of lovely traveling for work and stuff and making sure that I have breaks in the middle um, because exhaustion and busyness are not badges of honour they can could be horrific um, but um, yeah so I, I thought I would just talk about the ones that I had to hand that I've really 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 enjoyed but I don't know if we'll quite make it um, so yeah let's get cracking and also like I said books that I would like to get to over the coming weeks so first up first two books are really important for today because today is Trans Day of Remembrance and um, one book that I am a huge ally of the trans community, but I'm aware I don't know enough. And sometimes you can be afraid to ask. Um, and this book, What's the Tea by Juno Dawson, is like having a conversation with Juno around the whole trans, well, the whole trans experience and the whole trans discussion. And Juno does it in such a delightful, open, honest, friendly, funny, and just, yeah, it, it's, it's, it gives you so much insight, but talks to you in a really positive, empowering, never patronising, um, always open, I keep using the word open, um, way. And I know this is aimed at like a young adult audience, but really I think this book is for everyone and should be in every library across the UK. Because I learnt so much more and got so much more insight reading this, I thought it was incredible. So there's that one. I should say I'm doing these in size order, they're not order, size order, they're not in order of preference or anything because they're all basically my number 11 favourite. Um, then we have Somebody to Love by Alexandra Hemmingsley and um, this is a family story and this looks at what happened al after Alexandra got pregnant, um, which was quite a... Um, it was a it was a difficult time for her in many ways as you read to find out about how the pregnancy came to be and all those kind of things but also it's how after she was pregnant and i think after she'd given birth if i remember correctly um that her partner um announced that they wanted to transition and so it looks at how that has been for her and for them and also kind of looks at um alexandra's sort of relationship with her body in the past and how that brought those memories forward again and, and it's just really really insightful and what I love about the best sort of non-fiction and particularly narrative non-fiction is I will I will never have Alexandra's experience because I can't have children but I feel like I've understood it and empathised with her through what she's written and I think the more we read and the more we empathise and the more we understand the better so yeah fantastic book something completely different and one of the books that I read for me and Melanie's book club the Frank book club was Dara McNulty's um, Diary of a Young Naturalist and I just thought this was phenomenal on several levels firstly the writing is absolutely outstanding it's so beautiful this is set over well it's a diary so it's over seasons of Dara's life at a very important stage where he's moving schools and he has autism and it's how that experience is for him both the moving around plus actually just going to school full stop and he's got some really really insightful things on education and how to well how it's outdated now basically but also it's about celebrating nature which is his absolute love and becoming um, a voice of like the younger generation in terms of climate change but not just of the younger generation just an important voice within the climate change discussion and I love the fact that it celebrates some of the bits of nature that I don't think get celebrated like the everyday robin necessarily and all the things that we can go out and look at and celebrate and it just made me want to pay attention to the world and be kinder to it basically um so yeah I just think it's phenomenal and the fact that he's writing that like this at such a young age like just without that sounding patronizing just incredible um yeah I thought it was 
phenomenal. And actually, that's one that maybe could be in the top 10. So maybe I'm wrong. Hmm, teaser. And actually, another teaser mentioned Melanie. If you'd like to see some more nonfiction recommendations that I've loved by um, women authors, then head to the Frank Magazine uh, reading list, which is my monthly, or I think it's going to be fortnightly, books recommendation page. I'll link it down below. Anyway, um, this book actually could also possibly end up in the top 10, maybe. So maybe these, this, these are all my joint ninth at the moment, and I haven't shared with you my top eight yet, although you might see some of those in that Frank uh, Magazine article. Anyway, um, it's The Madness of Grief by Richard Coles, or sorry, Reverend Richard Coles. And this is the um, his memoir, basically, about his husband's death and how he dealt with the grief afterwards and everything else that came after, but also actually the lead up and how that was. And it's so powerful. And I read it earlier in the year and I just thought it's one, I do think maybe this is in my top 10. Um, it's one of just the most powerful, incredible books. As it went on, there was a little bit of distance for me, but I think that's possibly how grief can be. You can feel distance from everything. Um, but um, yeah, I just found it beautifully written. Um, and whilst harrowing, it's also kind of hopeful in some ways. Um, and I have had the pleasure of interviewing uh, Reverend Richard Coles for um, BBC Sounds Turn Up For The Books, which is the podcast I'm one of the hosts of, which is actually now, it sounds like, coming out in January 2022, not October, that's been and gone, or November or December. So anyway, that's an update on that. But utterly phenomenal. If you've not got to it yet, really, really, really recommend it. Um, then we have a joyful book, which is Bimini Bombulash's Release the Beast. And this also actually looks at um, gender and queerness in a really open, slightly wry, yet really powerful and poignant way. As Bimini gives us a drag queen's guide to life through the experiences that they have been through in their life and all the knowledge that they've kind of learned and then you get lists of like people to go and find out more about or books to go off and read or just things actions that you can do that are really good for you and empower you and also released your beast basically without that sounding right saucy I think that's kind of the point of the title um but yeah I had the pleasure of hosting an event with Bimini who was a joy and this book is just joyous so it would definitely recommend that oh I've just spied that it goes a bit rainbow if I do that oh how lovely so then we have um one of two books that I read for the Gordon Byrne that I hadn't read before um, it's because there are a few that I had read before the shortlist got announced and I thought they were both brilliant. Sea State by Tabitha Lasley is a really different story or form of narrative non-fiction. It is her story, so it is a story, um, but a form of narrative non-fiction than I've read before. Um, it's all about um, oil rigs and how there's this phenomenon around loneliness and isolation on them and suicide. And she goes to investigate this as a journalist. However, she slowly but surely becomes more and more embroiled, both in terms of fascination with what's going on, also, actually not both, in terms of the fascination of what's going on, also in terms of the fact that this becomes kind of, not an obsession about it exactly, but almost this addiction of trying to replicate the feeling, I guess, sort of, as well as becoming personally um, involved with what's going on. And yeah, I just thought it was incredible. Really frank, really honest, very funny in parts, very traumatic in parts, I should pre-warn. Um, but yeah, a brilliant book. Then an absolute joy that, again, this could, no, I'd say this, this would probably be my number, would it be my number 11? That is, I don't need to be doing this yet. I don't need to be adding the pressure to myself. Let's just say, I really loved The Book of Difficult Fruit by Kate Lebo, and it's arguments for the tart, tender and unruly. And basically you go through loads of different fruits in this, but you've got huckleberry, you've got cherry, you've got umplum, you've got osage orange, uh, kiwi fruit, and there's fascinating facts about them, stories about them, but you also get kind of Kate stories as you go along. This is one of those books where you get completely engrossed in it, but also one of those ones that you want to eke out and sort of read a chapter here and there. I was going to say, oh, Natalie, you don't have to do that. And I didn't only do that. I read it here, there and everywhere, washing my hands in between. Um, anyway, but um, it's just a joy of sort of 
I don't know, the unconventional and how it's brilliant, all the different properties and how you can make your own face masks and how you can do all, use all these different things, as well as these sort of really fascinating facts that you kind of find yourself sharing with people afterwards. So this to me is a book that just keeps on giving. So uh, yeah, I can't recommend that enough. Then the other book that I mentioned from the Gordon Burn Prize shortlist, and this was actually the book that won, is A Little Devil in America by Hanif Abdurraqib. And I would like to read this again slower. I listened to it on audio a bit like I, well, I sort of binged it on audio before the event. Um, and as I did a little bit, actually, see State, but this one I really, really want to head back to. Um, and this is a collection of essays that look at what it says in praise of black performance. And it's kind of people like Aretha Franklin, the stories around Michael Jackson, but also told in a really unusual way. The style is quite different, I think, for essays, but I've not read that many. So if you've got any essay collections you recommend, let me know down below well any non-fiction books that you'd recommend let me know down below that I don't mention that I've got coming up um uh yeah I I thought the way I thought the form and the style was really different I thought the angle and the overview or outlook from Hanif was really different too and yeah I just thought it was phenomenal and it's not often I say I want to reread something but I do really really want to reread those because like I said I listened to it on audio not read by him but um by an actor and I think sometimes that can create a slight distance I guess because you don't quite get all of the um what's the term that I want to use intentions etc behind it but I think reading you do anyway there we go there's that penultimately we have Raceless by Georgia Lawton now I read this for an event for Durham Book Festival if it's still live I will link it down below um, and uh, I interviewed Georgina with two other authors including Catherine Cho who slight spoiler might be in that Frank magazine article and might be in my favourite books of the year list or non-fiction books of the year list anyway um and this I thought was great and I think this is one of those books that is a real conversation starter for the right audience if that makes sense basically this book is about um how Georgina um grew up as a young black girl with two white parents and she was always told they were her parents and then something gets revealed and everything changes. And it's a book very much about identity and trying to find your heritage and feeling at odds with everything possibly because of that. Not everything, but with some things and almost kind of wanting to attach yourself to something so that you feel like you belong a bit more. Um, and also what I loved with this is it's very conversational, yet it's kind of got a slight academic edge in, in the fact that there's facts and figures, so you're learning a lot more. And that is normally a turn off for me in nonfiction, but goes to show how brilliantly this is written because I just carried on reading and sort of soaking up all the information and, and getting a better understanding of all sorts of things in this book. So yeah, absolutely brilliant. And then last but certainly not least of the books that I would recommend before I head to the ones that I'm gonna hopefully head to, is A Dutiful Boy by uh, Machine Zaidi, um, a memoir of a gay Muslim's journey to acceptance. And that kind of is, well, it, says, it does what it says on the tin and it does it brilliantly. I think it's a fantastic, fantastic book. Um, I had a bit of a problem because on audio, the pacing was a bit off, so I then had to head back to it. So it kind of threw me a little bit um, out of kilter with that, but, um, yeah, I thought it was great. And last year, you'll know, I absolutely loved um, Glamroux's book, uh, Life as a Unicorn. And this feels like a sibling to that. And I think if you read them, you get sort of similar insights, but at the same time, completely different insights. And I love where sort of books talk to each other and interact without them knowing that they're doing it. So yeah, absolutely brill. Now, very quickly, Ish, as quick as I can be, onto the books that I would really like to head to. And for some reason, I've not done them in size order, but never mind. First of all, we have um, a book that Chris got me for my birthday, actually, which is Wayward Lives of Beautiful Experiments, Intimate Histories of Riotous Black Girls, Troublesome Women and Queer, queer Radicals. That's all I need to know. I've been wanting to read it for ages. I do feel a little bit, actually, like the next book as well, that this might be a bit too clever for me and that I'm probably not clever enough to get it all. But I'm going to give it a go at some point anyway, because also I know there's some more books by um, Sadia Hartman. Sorry, I should have said that's who the book was by, um, that I would like to kind of get to. And Claudia Rankin really recommends them. And I love Claudia Rankin's writing. So there we go. The other one that I feel a little bit like I might not be clever enough to or get is Everybody by Olivia Lang. And the reason that I say this is I loved Crudo. It's one of my favourite novels of 2017. Or was it 2018 that it came out? Anyway, one of my favourite books of the year that I read it. And then I was so excited for her last book, which was 
uh, Funny Weather. Um, and I think Funny Weather, some of it I really got where I knew the artist she was talking about. Some of it I kind of felt quite alienated from. And also some of it I was like, this is quite... Um, I felt like sometimes it could have been tight edited, which considering they're short form pieces probably sounds awful. I don't mean it to, but... And also, yeah, sometimes I don't feel clever enough for it. So I'm a little bit worried about this. And it's probably why actually Freedom by Maggie Nelson I have not bought yet. Because, and I love her, like... Argonauts is one of my favourite non-fiction books of all time, but um, I've just felt like not clever enough. And I was talking to CJ Reads about it, um, and she was saying it will like blow your mind. And I was like, oh, but probably actually, and I'm not great where I'll just be like, oh, I don't understand anything, and I'm stupid, and I can't read this. Anyway, uh, then we have The Dragons, The Giant, The Women, um, and this is a memoir by Way Too More. And I read, what was that? It was her novel and I loved it. She Would Be King. And I thought it was really, really brilliant. I was excited for more from um, Wayatu. And this I got given for my birthday from a lovely, lovely, I want to say that Cindy got it for me and I might be wrong. I think, I don't know if I've got the gift note in it. Sorry, Cindy, if it was you or if it was someone else, I'm even sorry. Um, but thank, but also thankful because the book arrived. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was one I just wanted to get to. Um, it wasn't out in the UK yet, so this came from America. So um, yeah, very excited to get to that. Tracy Thorne, I absolutely loved. Was it called Funny Planet? Oh my Lord, what's wrong? Another Planet. Um, I really, really loved it. So I wanted to go backwards but then this was coming out so I thought well maybe I'll read my rock and roll friend next and this is about a relationship um a, a friendship that um Tracy has had and still has I think but it's the arc of a friendship between her and another uh, musician called Lindy so yeah I'm really really intrigued for this one I don't tend to like books that are quite specific on music but I think because this is about friendship and I find friendship a really interesting and sometimes mystifying thing um, yeah that's why I read it and then the last one I kind of want to read but I've heard so many different things about it I think that's become what's intriguing me more than anything else and it did recently win non-fiction uh, book of the year at the books of my bag Readers Awards, which Mum and I presented like the behind the scenes bit of. Um, it's Anita Seth's I Belong Here, A Journey Along the Backbone of Britain. And I think this is about, um, there was, uh, Anita kind of was um, on the end of some horrific racist abuse about how she didn't belong here. And so she goes back um, and sort of walks a lot of the north of England, which is where I'm from, um, and sort of tries to see how she feels and fits in with everything, I think. But I have heard really makes things. People either really love this or think it's really not well written. So that's going to be interesting to see as I read along. And I quite like this one. I'm not somebody who really, the irony of me saying this, um, I'm not somebody who really like goes out of their way to find book recommendations. I watch a lot of channels and get, I see that as getting book recommendations by default, if that makes sense. But um, yeah, I am... Um, I have heard quite a lot of, about this book in different ways and it's made me want to read it. Anyway, I've talked for far too long. Those are the books that I would recommend you pick up, not just for the end of Nonfiction November, but for the rest of the year or into next year. And um, the books that I am um, really looking forward to. I will speak to you all soon. Recommend me any nonfiction books that I have mentioned down below. Thank you very much. Goodbye.